So you will see the, the, the title is a bit different from um, what you see on the, um, on the program. And I would like to begin with this quote from one of my um, interviewees. And this is actually a quote I got from the field work I conducted for my previous project. So the, 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 the actual substance of this is not so much relevant to that project because that one is about online peer production um, in, in, in China. But this quote did struck me as a very profound observation of some of the main um, tensions I have been contemplating myself regarding you know, the, the, the doing research about political discourses and the political discussions um, on the Chinese internet. So what I'm going to do is that I will try to then um, put you know, some of this sort of incongruency and also inconsistent discrepancy described here in more academic terms and use that as a way to um, frame my presentation. And I have to say this is uh, a very much a thinking in, in process and I don't really have a result or a, a, a conclusion to present as some of the um, previous um, presentations. But I would very much like you to invite you to, to, to think um, you know, through this, this process with me. Um, so the reason why I think this is a very um, intriguing quote is I think it really points to um, several very important issues here. First of all is that if we, you know, as media researchers, as researchers who um, does research about new media and internet, and I wonder sometimes whether we are being more or less media centric or internet centric. That is when we try to read various symptoms or various issues of the real offline society from the media, um, are we sometimes also missing something? And to what extent that media in general, or maybe um, internet more specifically in this context, really provide uh, a privileged access to, to the center of the society? Or are we missing something? Or should we look, um, at, um, look at this relationship between the online and offline world in, in a different way, instead of simply assuming that the online world is a mechanical reflection of what's going on in the offline world? And secondly, in connection with this, I think it's also about how we should better understand the relationship between online and offline politics. And here I have you know, two examples. One, for me, I think is predominantly something that is being mobilized through the internet and particularly with a focus you know, by the uh, political dissidents located outside China and also mobilized using the Western media and also social media as, as a platform. As opposed to another protest that when it started, it's very much st started from the, the more of an or organic concern of the, this land issue in the rural villages' everyday life. And if you look at the initial mobilization um, strategies, the internet didn't really play a big part in that. It's very much a conventional way of political mobilization and organization. But it's only when this story was picked up by Western media, when Western media started to have a presence in the village, and then the villagers themselves also realized the power of this, and they started to um, just try to disseminate their agenda and initiate discussion um, using this, this. So I think these are two uh, very different cases and they point to a different kind of dynamics between online and offline politics and it, it seemed to invite us to develop maybe a more sophisticated understanding rather than maybe one reflecting the, the, um, the other. And thirdly, I think particularly regarding the Chinese context, um, you know, the, 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 the quote is saying that if you go to the, 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 the sign of Weibo, you, you think that there's going to be a revolutionary tomorrow. And if you go to the grocery market, um, it, it, it's, it looks like the, a revolution that is not going to happen for another um, century. But I think sort of this quote also implicitly suggests a particular understanding of politics and political um, engagement in the sense that it seemed to more conceptualize political engagement that as something associated with um, institutional politics and formal politics, politics more in a conventional sense. But I want to argue is that particularly within the Chinese context, 
where access to uh, conventional political uh, participation is heavily controlled, where there, there is this um, heavily regulated speech environment um, in which discussion, uh, political discussion in the, 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 the conventional and orthodox sense is also very much censored. We should probably expand our understanding of what counts as political discourse and what counts as political engagement not only in the substance of the discussion, but also maybe even in the format of the discussion. I have written previously in some, um, some wor uh, work about you know, how we, we should look at, for example, online spoofs and parodies as an alternative format of, of political um, discourse. Um, so in other words, what new media is, is reconfiguring is not only extending the platform for, for discussion, but it's also um, shaping the format the way that the discussion is, is conducted. And lastly, you know, if, if you think about that quote, it, it seemed to also point out there is this separation almost of those groups who have a strong presence in the online world, those people who frequent um, microblogging sites, and those people who are um, you know, the, the regular um, customers on the, on the, um, the, the grocery market. And I guess this also points to another issue that is which group we are talking about when we talk about so-called Chinese society and online discussion. Um, in the context of the, the, the increasing stratification of Chinese society and also thinking about which group is online and which group is, is excluded. And it's not just about who has a presence online but also what kind of discourse has a stronger voice or um, is, is being also picked up and disseminated much more um, as opposed to other kind of discourse and, and discussions. Um, so these are, these are some of the overarching um, issues I have been thinking about and I'm going to then refer to um, two cases and cases I'm sure everyone here is, is quite familiar with. Um, and I think this, this quote, I don't have time to read it, but um, it's, it's, it's from John Thompson um, in his discussion about visibility um, in media. And he is emphasizing here, first of all, the, 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 the importance of looking at visibility of different issues and different groups, and also the power relationship that configures this kind of visibility or invisibility in today's media-saturated environment. So I thought about whether to put this picture here because it's certainly not the prettiest picture, um, but I think it's quite illustrative of I will waste typical um, strategy of uh, you know um, turning the official prog propaganda against itself and also um, to 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 attract um, attention. And the, um, in case you cannot see clearly, the, the it's a it's a toy. Um, that resembles the image of the famous um, grass horse that he's uh, using here. And the, 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 the caption of this picture is grass horse covering the middle. And for those of you who understand Chinese, you would know what this is referring to. Um, and I have here a list of, of some of the, the, the major events. I don't intend to run through of, um, all of this, but what I want to highlight here is his, um, his capability and also the kind of communication resources that he is in possession of that have enabled him to turn almost um, every single attempt, every single disciplinary attempt by the state um, against its own head. That is, if you see, you know, first of all, he, he started, he, he, um, of course, before this, we all knew that he was being very outspoken on his microblog and, and, and um, blo blogging sites, and everybody was wondering how come he hasn't attracted the attention of the, 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 the official authority. And then um, the, the, the tipping point came when he started this um, investigation on students killed in the Sichuan earthquake that he collected the names of all those students. And also he um, invited individuals to read out every, every of those, those 5,000 something um, names and also post those, um, the, the recording on, on the website. And that's where he got to, um, into trouble. And, but then uh, in August 2009 when he went to Chengdu to, um, to 
as, as part of that investigation that um, the, 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 the public security official um, was, was stalking them and then he turned this into another documentary of his because he recorded this whole um, process. And then after that, there was also the order saying that his studio would be demolished because it didn't, it was not properly licensed. Uh, but then he turned this again into another internet, internet spectacle or, or, or internet um, event that he invited people to go there and have a river, river crab um, feast. Um, and, and then after that, his studio was indeed um, demolished. And then most, more recently, um, he was arrested for the alleged economic um, crime and then he yet again turned that into another spectacle by soliciting donation from average internet users um, and it was reported that he was actually able to get um, 1 million RMB donation because he said he need to first pay the state some money in order to ask for a review of this um, taxation um, case. So what we see here Obviously, it's different attempts, you know, from the, 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 the state and also um, for, for him as a way, a different attempts trying to shape the narrative about what, is, what this is really about. And if you look at the state media discourse, um, they basically label him as someone being deviant and also they, they question the originality of his artwork. And there was a uh, discussion saying that he's simply plagiarizing a lot of um, Western contemporary artists and there was there's no originality whatsoever in, in his work. Um, and the Western media of course pick up, picked up on this and there's also I think um, as far as I know at least one documentary about him um, already called um, I Will Wait Never Say Sorry. And it's, it's, he's being framed more in Western media as a one-man hero against a, a repressive um, state. And I was just told that I only have um, three more minutes. Um, so, and, and this, this more, um, more recent case, um, I guess, you know, you, you don't have, um, you, you don't really need me to even um, run through all this, the, 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 the unfolding of the event, um, in which, which I think to a large extent, it's still unfolding, it's still a bit um, unpredictable. Um, but I think, again, it's about, what kind of narrative is constructed and then what is the power struggle, power relationship um, behind these narratives. And I think one thing that set this um, in, 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 in contrast with the previous case is that um, interestingly in this case there seemed to be more agreement and or in, 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 to a large extent um, Western media is in complicity with the state media this time. That is, when every week case came, up, came along, West media is saying that, of course, the, 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 the accusation of the state um, that he's, he evaded tax is, is, is a false accusation and it's only an excuse of political repression. Um, but this time, West media more or less followed um, the, the, the story and the kind of narrative that has been put forward by the, the, the state media. That is, this is a corrupted individual and then afterwards there is more emphasis for the, for the Chinese media, there is more emphasis um, on unity and the Western media focus more on details of corruption. Even though, you know, I don't know how closely you guys have been following this, even New York Times a few weeks ago May this um, had to come up with an, art, uh, an article saying that well actually some of the details that have been circulating um, in, in Western media regarding the lifestyle of Bo Guo are not that um, accurate. And what we see here again is are these attempts trying to um, shape and, and control the narrative about the story and this time we see the government is actually actively using social media to set the agenda. The, the news that Bo Xilai will be suspended from the Politburo was also um, start, you know, circulated through microblogging, the, the microblogs uh, of the, the official um, media. And secondly, there is this attempt to depoliticizing um, the scandal. It, they tend to you know, focus more on him as an individual case and obviously Premier Wen's comment at the news conference referring this to, you know, linking this to cultural revolution is a clear attempt to close down rather than opening up a political um, debate. Um, and interestingly, 
you know, when by the time when um, this this happened, the, the the most prominent Maoist website um, in China, Utopia, w was closed down, and there was a temporary unblocking of the Falun Gong um, website. So some um, concluding remarks. I think we um, you know probably want to reconsider the relationship um, between um, online and offline politics and also the role that internet um, plays here. It's certainly not just a reflection of what's going on. It's certainly not just an extension of, of, of that. But I think there is more of a dialectic relationship in terms of offline politics certainly shape online discourse, but online discourse also would have an, an influence on the, um, the offline politics. And internet, in, in this sense, I think we should also uh, move beyond an instrumentalist view, thinking of this the, it purely as, as, a, as a technology, that it also provides interpretive frame, particularly at a time when information is, is, is limited, when people is, are trying to make sense of um, what's going on. And also, I think um, there is obviously um, the, the role of the, 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 um, the kind of unequal distribution of communication um, resource, um, thinking about the kind of resource that Ai Weiwei has and his capability of generating these um, internet spectacles, as opposed to those people who um, probably are, um, you know, those who are more supportive of some of the social and the political policies of Bo Xilai, yet they don't necessarily have a strong, uh, have a, a strong presence or a voice. And there isn't much discussion about how his policy um, catered to certain um, discontent and grievance in Chinese society against the, the new liberal um, agenda. Um, so I think here we, we can talk about the politics behind this presence versus absence and the visibility versus um, invisibility. Thanks.